Hey everyone, before I get into this special episode of Prime News, that's right, Prime News, uh, I want to remind you to enter our Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition giveaway for the Nintendo Switch. All you have to do is comment on this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so that it's all notifications, all that jazz. Anyways, that's it. Let's go. Welcome everyone to a special edition of Prime News. This is kind of a a recap I'm doing. I don't know. We'll see if this thing continues from uh, here on out. But uh, we have a lot of stories. Ten stories to be in fact from this past week. Not all of them Nintendo, but plenty of Nintendo goodness in here as well. Um, lots of big stuff kind of recapping all of the biggest stories from the week now. Obviously not every single story out there can make it in. You know, there's hundreds and thousands of stories that come out um, seemingly by the day, let alone by the week. But these are some of the ones I felt were the biggest ones that I wanted to make sure all of you guys knew about. Let's get into it. And the first one obviously being the thing that everyone is talking about in Nintendo land right now, and that is a new Paper Mario game. That's right, Paper Mario the Origami King is coming to Nintendo Switch on July 17th. Now, uh, it's uh, obviously um, origami makes a lot of sense for a Paper Mario game in terms of the style. Um, you know, the story-wise, it, it's another Princess Peach related thing, you know, inviting Mario and Luigi to attend the Kingdom's Origami Festival. Something's a little off with Princess Peach. All that jazz. Turns out the King Ali, which is like the king of origami land, um, is hatching a plan to end up folding the entire world. Mario's invited to fold into it, whatever. Uh, as you're seeing throughout the, the footage here on the uh, reveal trailer, there's just a lot of stuff going on, um, including an interesting Metroid reference. However, um, I'm not going to touch base on that because it's all speculation. It doesn't really necessarily mean anything. Uh, but I feel like uh, this game is just exactly what we needed, and it kind of also confirms... A potential rumor out there about some other stuff that we're going to get into a little bit later but yes uh paper mario the origami king is coming on july 17th along with another big game that we will talk about again soon next up venture beat is reporting that mario 3d remasters and the pikmin 3 deluxe is ready to release soon now we knew about the remasters because they were actually part of the initial rumor if you guys remember from a couple weeks ago that actually talked about how we are going to get a new paper mario game and we're going to get all of these 3D Mario remasters, including Mario 64, Sunshine, the Galaxy games, etc. Um, this is all exciting stuff. And obviously, with Paper Mario being confirmed, this naturally lends credence to the fact that, uh, yeah, these 3D remaster rumors are probably true. And apparently coming soon. So I guess this would suggest that it's going to be releasing maybe in June or something. I, I'm not sure here since, obviously, we know Paper Mario is coming out in July. Now, as for... Uh, Pikmin 3 uh, Deluxe or whatever it ends up being called. Uh, there's been, you know, rumors for a long time that we were going to get the Pikmin game over, or at least maybe maybe assumptions that we were going to get Pikmin 3 over. It's one of the few Switch exclusives to not come over yet from Nintendo side of things, uh, and one that was obviously very highly reviewed. Personally, I want to see Nintendo Land come over as well, but uh, yeah, Pikmin 3 uh, coming to Switch it just feels natural. Obviously, this is going to springboard hope for Pikmin 4 Revival. I don't know that we're going to hear about that this year. Uh, you know, is this Nintendo filling out 2020 with a bunch of ports and remasters? Maybe. Uh, but hey, we got the Paper Mario game. So now we got these to look forward to as well if you need something to fill your time this summer. Uh, speaking of the Nintendo Switch and games coming to it, here's a game or a franchise that has not previously been on Switch that you guys might might care about, I guess if you're into s sports games or a very niche sports game, and that is PGA Tour 2K21. It is coming to Nintendo Switch. It's the first time the series has appeared on the platform. It's coming August 21st. They did a reveal trailer for it and all that. Um, looks pretty good. Obviously, you know, I have a lot of uh, fond memories of playing golf games growing up, whether it's the original golf on NES or we're, you know, we're talking, obviously, the more advanced Tiger Woods series and all that. So uh, I'm pretty happy to see this. 2K usually does an excellent job with their sports games. Uh, so if you're looking or itching to play some golf on Switch later this year, uh, yeah, you'll be able to play it on there. It'll also be available, of course, on, on Xbox and PlayStation and all that jazz and the next-gen platforms as well. So, uh, yep, it's going to be on everything, and that's pretty cool. Next up, a little bit of sad news for some people. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is cut from EVO 2020. Now, it's not as simple as just saying Smash, go away. Uh, EVO 2020 itself has kind of massively changed 
what it's going to be. Normally, it's the largest fighting game tournament in the world, or at least the most popular fighting game tournament in the world, uh, with you know oodles and oodles of different fighting games, uh, including Smash and, and many others. Uh, I forget the total slate. I think is usually up around 15 different fighting games, and uh, it's always an in-person tournament and all that because obviously fighting game tournaments are best done in person. Well, because of the worldwide pandemic, they are not doing it in person. Instead, they are doing it every single weekend in July. Um, and they're doing it all online, which means some games had to be cut. In particular, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate had to be cut because they are focusing on games that have the best net code, aka the games that present the least amount of chance of lag in a professional setting. They want to try to eliminate lag as a factor as much as they possibly can. Uh, so that is what they're doing, and that is why Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is not part of EVO 2020. That being said... Um, there are other games that aren't a part of the official tournament but are like pushed out to a more general audience that a lot of people can play. Mortal Kombat 11, as an example, is one such game where it's not part of the main slate, but it is part of a side dish that everyone can play. Uh, and I don't know if there's going to be prizes for that yet or anything, but uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, they're, they're doing kind of a, a more open style tournament for some games versus just having the pros play. Uh, and it's going to be really a, a very interesting event. And obviously Evo is going to be a big deal all throughout July. Um, speaking of events this summer, Square Enix has canceled their plans for an online event. Uh, this is well. This was originally it became a story because they announced they were going to have an online event to replace their E3 presentation they usually have every year, uh, and they, along with a few other companies, uh, said they were going to do something. And now they're kind of backing off and have decided, according to Bloomberg, anyways. Again, this isn't coming from Square Enix. It's coming from um, a reporter at Bloomberg that Square Enix is going to be releasing individual announcements throughout the year. Uh, and this was largely because they had a problem getting the assets together to do the larger presentation. Now, obviously, I don't know if this is because of game delays or if it's just really hard to coordinate all the different teams and everyone's working at home. I'm not exactly sure why that would be the case. But again, Nintendo is also kind of doing individual announcements like the Paper Mario one uh, earlier versus doing bigger, broader, general directs. I mean, we did get a mini, but we, you know, it just feels like Nintendo's might not be doing a big direct this year. Uh, they're not doing anything for E3 as well. We know they're not going to have anything in June for a direct. So, um, yeah, but all hope isn't lost because Ubisoft is actually going to be doing something. Um, they are... They've officially announced their own massive online presentation called Ubisoft Forward, and it's taking place on July 12th, which is my fiance's birthday. Kind of cool. Her 30th birthday. <laughs> what a special day, because it's not only her 30th birthday. We also get the Ubisoft thing at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, and they are promising a whole swath of announcements and big games and all that. It's basically their E3 presentation a month later. Um, on a month delayed so it's going to be pretty cool uh, maybe a little bit different format obviously i'm well, maybe hopefully more of the uh nintendo direct style uh way of doing it but we'll see what happens uh but yeah so square enix again is just going to be doing individual announcements throughout the year likely through social media and youtube uh whereas ubisoft's still going to do a big event they're just doing it a month later than they normally would now Getting into some other non-news that isn't necessarily related to Nintendo per se. We got Ghost of Tsushima. I hope I said that right. I know it's um, uh, a Chinese thing, so I, I apologize. Uh, we got a huge gameplay presentation at Sony's State of Play this week. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it looks like the most impressive game ever, but it looks very, very interesting for being an open world game. Uh, they did show off a lot of features in this presentation that went about 18 minutes long. Um, you know, how to navigate the open world using wind, which is kind of a different technique that I haven't really seen since, I guess, Wind Waker, but it made more sense in Wind Waker, I guess. I don't know. It's an interesting thing. Uh, we also got our first look at some of the more in-depth samurai combat and combat in general, including um, the ghost style combat, which essentially to me looks like Assassin's Creed assassin combat, except like just the sneaking around assassinations versus the um, brute force where I guess Assassin's Creed kind of takes the samurai combat and uh, the ghost combat and puts it all together this kind of separates it out into two different play styles uh, and so I guess that's kind of it's you know ghost of Tsushima I mean, Tsushima sorry the T is silent um, I guess is where the ghost part comes from where you can like play the game really stealth like if you really want or you could just brute force it as a samurai um, they did show off also a more cinema like mode uh, that kind of puts the game in black and white 
uh, kind of like classic samurai movies, I guess is the idea here. Also, obviously, for those that are colorblind, this is going to be an absolutely masterful mode. And how the colors are, are kind of blown out in this game actually works well for a black and white mode. So um, it almost feels like maybe the intentional blowout of certain colors was intentional to make this mode be as good as it possibly could be by putting in black and white. So I don't know. I think it's kind of cool uh, that they're even considering that. Then again, the game does release as well on July 17th for PlayStation 4. So yeah, we're getting Paper Mario for Switch that day, and we're getting Ghost of Tsushima on the same day. I think that's kind of cool. Moving on, uh, there's a reveal event coming for PlayStation 5 at some point in 2020, right? Like, that's what we're led to believe, that there's going to be a reveal event. I mean, why wouldn't there be? Uh, but Sony hasn't actually announced anything, and it's weird. They've been playing it really coy with the PlayStation 5. They guarantee it's launching this year, and they'll talk about some of the specs and stuff at a GDC type thing, but they don't really want to show anything. We got it's a little bit of Unreal Engine stuff we'll talk about later. But yeah, we haven't really seen much of the PlayStation 5. Well, it looks like that's going to be changing pretty soon. Um, according to Jeff Grubb, who I have no idea who this guy is. He's some guy on Twitter, but he leaked I guess leaked, I guess he reported on um, a bunch of events that were going to happen throughout this year, including uh, the Xbox event that did the gameplay reveal for Xbox Series X over a week ago. Like they, I guess that was like his first thing that he nailed on his list of summer things or, or things that are going to be happening throughout the summer. Uh, and next up is an event on June 4th, which he is calling Slate of PlayStation, whether or not that's what it's actually called. I don't know. That's just what he's calling it. Uh, and he's essentially saying there's going to be a lot of games shown off on June 4th, uh, including a bunch of PlayStation 5 games. Now, it's either going to be all PlayStation 5 games or it's going to be a combination of PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 games, possibly like PlayStation 4 enhanced on, on PlayStation 5, etc. He doesn't exactly know the exact slate of games, but he's like really, really confident that's when we're going to see PlayStation 5 games, um, PlayStation 5 reveal, all that jazz. So uh, I guess we'll have to look forward to June 4th and see if Jeff Grubb nailed it because uh, he nailed the Xbox thing, you know, over a week ago. So maybe he's got this right too. Um, that's why people are paying attention because, uh, he might be an insider. I don't know. He's got a lot of followers on Twitter, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, moving on. Uh, we have the unreal engine five reveal. I was shown off this week and I did an entire video on this reacting to it, covering it. Um, and I even stated in that video that I don't know if it's going to be coming to the switch, uh, that it would be scalable on future devices. Well, I was wrong. Uh, it will be fully scalable. Uh, it will be arriving on Nintendo Switch. It will be coming on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, current uh, mobile devices, you know, you know, the current phones, and also some of the little bit older phones. Almost anything, it seems like, that Unreal Engine 4 runs on, Unreal Engine 5 will run on. Now, this doesn't mean all of the good new features, the Lumen features, all that jazz, the new physics will necessarily be possible on some of these older devices, but it is going to be runnable on those devices and fully scalable, and pretty much any game running in Unreal Engine 4 will be able to port quite easily into Unreal Engine 5. So it makes you wonder if Unreal Engine 5 was actually built on top of Unreal Engine 4 as like a base. That being said, uh, we know games like Fortnite and others will be transitioning to Unreal Engine 5, and that game is on, well, Switch. So there you go. Switch will already have an Unreal Engine 5 game running on it at some point in 2021. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, I think it's nice to see that this new engine still will run on, on the current Switch, even if there's obviously going to be some features that won't work exactly the way they do on, say, the latest hardware, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and PC. So, yeah, cool. Um, Unreal Engine 5 looks great, at least on the best, you know, some of the best specs out there you can have with PlayStation 5 footage. So, we'll see what happens. Now, this next story is one that I don't care a lot about, but a lot of you will. If you ever played a Tony Hawk game and you played the old school games, where in, in particular Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, you have a lot of reasons to be excited right now because they are being fully remastered for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And as you see in, in, in whatever I'm showing on screen right now, I'm not sure if I'm showing footage or screenshots, there is a big upgrade visually here. Um, and it does feature online play, which wasn't obviously part of the original games because it just wasn't a thing back then. Uh, and they have made the course builder in it much more robust. Um, so in addition to the updated visuals and all that, there's going to be um, all the original content from the games is going to be present in it in addition to the online modes. Uh, 
including most of the music tracks. I think there's like five or six music tracks that did not make the cut because of licensing issues. Uh, but I mean, that's that's going to happen in a game that uses licensed music. You know, license expire. They can't be renewed. They're too expensive to renew. Um, it is all being created and handled by Vicarious Vision, who has done a lot of um, remasters and ports over the years for uh, things like PlayStation 4 and Xbox and such. So uh, they have a lot of experience and it looks pretty good. And if it plays like the old games, everyone that played those games is probably going to love playing them again uh, with upgraded visuals and all that jazz. So uh, it's kind of a shame it's not coming to Switch. I'm not seeing anything uh, that shows that it shouldn't be able to run on a Switch. Uh, when we have games like The Witcher 3 and Doom Eternal coming, I don't really understand why you know a remaster of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 can't come, but... Uh, I don't get to make those decisions, but hey, you know what? It's better they exist than they don't. Even if they might not come to my preferred platform, they're still going to be out there for a lot of people to play. And the last story, and this is more of a just in case. I don't really have much else to say about it. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V is available right now on the Epic Game Store for free. Now, I know some people are kind of against the Epic Game Store and all this stuff. It's another uh, Steam-like store on PC, but hey, it's free. It's Grand Theft Auto V. If you haven't played it, you know, check it out. Um, I don't know who hasn't played it at this point, but it keeps selling in the top 10 on like all the various platforms every single month. So clearly, there's plenty of people who haven't played it. Just you know, unless people don't buy multiple copies. I guess on um, multiple systems. I don't know, but it's available for free on PC right now through the Epic Games. So take advantage of it while you can, because I don't think it's a. I think it's a timed period where they give it to you for free, and you do get to keep it. Um, but yeah, kind of cool. Um, kudos to you, Epic Game Store, for just giving games away. This is actually part of an ongoing program they've had for a little bit now, where they add like a big game here and there for free. You know, obviously they got contracts and all that. Think of it like Microsoft Game Pass, except you know they just give you the game once in a while. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robledance from the Tenor Prime. This was a special, weird edition of Prime News, a little recap of the week. Um, ten big stories, the ten biggest stories I felt from the week. There's a lot of other stories I could have talked about, you know, potential switch shortages and blah, 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 blah. I, I covered those in some other videos. I don't know. I'm just glad to be somewhat back, kind of, sort of, fancier editing little with some green screen action, Nintendo Prime merch. Check the link down in the description if you'd like to get some of that. Who wants Nintendo Prime merch anyways? I mean, come on. It does look pretty fly on me, but it doesn't mean it's going to look fly on you. Let's just be real. Only one guy looks good in Nintendo Prime merch. Anyways, folks. Um, yeah, I'll just catch you guys in the next video.